Good to go, Michael. So we on? Hey, welcome everybody. I'm Michael Guthrie, and I am the principal broker of Roy Wheeler Realty Company here in Charlottesville, Virginia, uh, serving the central Virginia area, the surrounding counties. Um, far west is uh, out towards Stanton, far east is almost, well, actually to the west side of Richmond. Uh, we head up into that uh, Culpeper, uh, Madison area north of town, and we go south almost to uh, touch Lynchburg. And uh, we've been around for a good long while. We were established in 1927. Uh, so we've adapted to a lot of markets um, over the last almost 100 years. And uh, it's why we continue to be uh, one of the um, top real estate companies here in this area. We have um, approximately 100 uh, sales associates, all very, very professional, all caring people that, that really want to do the best job they can. And it's one of the reasons why we have a 98% uh, client satisfaction rate, rating where people uh, rate our work and say that 98% uh, of the time that we um, do such great work, either excellent or very good work, that they would recommend us to their friends and family and, and would use this again. And um, we consider that a great privilege and we don't take that uh, for granted. We work hard each and every day for every transaction. And that's why we made the decision to uh, kind of get outside of our comfort zone and uh, do things a little bit differently. Uh, some of you may have joined us a couple of weeks ago where we had a virtual home buyer seminar. And uh, we had a, a bunch of people that, that joined that and uh, the nice thing about streaming this onto Facebook is that you can go to the Roy Wheeler Facebook page and um, this recording will be there. And uh, as of um, just a few days ago, there were I think over 750 people that had viewed our, our virtual home buyer seminar. So we decided to flip the coin, uh, change things a little bit and, and, and come to the seller side uh, because as we're experiencing this, uh, these restrictions, these regulations, and, and mostly we're talking about Central Virginia and we're talking about Virginia, but we, I know we have people that will join us from other states. You have to be, um, make sure that you talk to, to realtors in those areas because every place is different. And even in Virginia, um, I think uh, Northern Virginia will uh, be a little bit slower in, in sort of opening back up as as the rest of uh, Virginia, and especially here in the Charlottesville Central Virginia area. But uh, what we wanted to do tonight is just to uh, tell you that yes, you can sell your house um, uh, while we're in COVID-19. Lots of people are doing it. Uh, the activity in our marketplace has continued to be strong. Uh, certainly not like it would normally be um, in this April, May timeframe, but boy, a whole lot stronger than I think any of us anticipated. And I think one of the reasons for that is because we've been very, very good about following the regulations that the governor has set forward in regards to how to do business. We were fortunate in Virginia to be considered real estate, um, uh, to be considered an essential business. And, uh, and so we've been going at it um, in different ways. Absolutely, uh, virtually, um, uh, doing things, FaceTiming and, and videoing and doing things before anybody even sees a house to see if it really is a house they'd like to see. Uh, and even when the showing, making sure the sellers know that, that the agent and the folks that they're gonna show the property to are gonna um, adhere to the guidelines and do all the things that need to be done to, uh, to keep everybody safe. And so far in the Central Virginia area, we've been very fortunate uh, you hate to lose uh, anybody. We've we've had 13 deaths so far in in the Thomas Jefferson Health District, um, but man, it could have been so much worse. And I really believe it's because we've all worked really really hard to do this right and um, and not to um, you know not to get out there too quick and and not to um, not adhere to the regulations. So I'm just going to take a few minutes with you uh, here just to get started, just to talk about. The home buying process. Uh, Vincent's going to share the screen for us um, here, and and let me walk you through some things, and then we'll 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 move right forward. So, this is just a real quick, you know, if you remember David Letterman uh, on television, he used to do his top ten. Well, this is uh, my quick uh, sort of top ten uh, step by step guide to the home home selling process. And no matter what 
um, market that you're in, no matter what health crisis like we are dealing with right now, the first thing you really want to do is uh, you want to interview listing agents. I mean, you may know somebody already. They may have sold you your house and you're dead set on using them and that's great. But uh, if you haven't done this for a long time, um, uh, you know, we, you really want to get somebody who's going to guide you throughout the entire sales process. And so you may want to interview several agents to find the right one. Uh, I encourage you to, to interview unless you really know who you want or somebody has re referred you to somebody that, that says they're just going to do a great job for you. Uh, interviewing two or three people will be well worth your time. We at Roy Wheeler Realty Company uh, have, have got it set up that we can do that um, uh, via Zoom. Uh, we have a digital um, listing presentation that we can uh, walk you through so that we don't have to be in your home and we can walk you through all the things that we would normally walk you through face to face. Um, but interviewing um, listing agents, really, really important. Another thing I'll say before you, you know, we move to the second one is, if you are thinking about selling your house yourself, I would reconsider at least during this time period. Anybody that's heard me talk about selling your home in the past, uh, I've said, look, if you wanna to try to sell your home on your own, that's great, uh, give it a shot. We're here to help you, we'll answer questions for you. Bill Tucker, who is a, an attorney who will be talking with you in just a few minutes, um, you know, he, we, we put you in touch with him. But just in the last week, we've had two different for sale by owners who had their houses on the market trying to sell it themselves, what, weren't getting any activity because people didn't know what to expect. And they finally um, made the decision to list with uh, a couple of our real estate associates. And both of those houses sold in just a matter of days um, and at a very good price and then with very, very good terms. So if you're thinking about selling your home yourself, I would really reconsider that uh, during this time period. Once things get back to normal, maybe that'll change, but uh, people really wanna know that when they go in a house, it's gonna be uh, done properly and adhere to all the guidelines. And, and uh, so anyway, uh, that's just a, a quick side note. Um, this, the second thing I would tell you is um, you wanna get your, you know, you wanna choose the right agent and you wanna get an agent that's gonna really help you price your home competitively. Uh, the biggest mistake you can make is to, uh, overprice the property. In fact, it's a bigger mistake to overprice the property than it is to underprice the property. If you underprice the property, especially if it's in the right place and it's in good condition and, um, and it's in the price that a lot of buyers are in, uh, you're going to get multiple offers. And if you get multiple offers, it's going to take that price above maybe what you would have thought you were going to get. So if you're going to make a mistake in, in competitively and aggressively marketing your property, um, and make the mistake on the on the underside versus the overside. The problem with the overside is that uh, houses are selling pretty quickly. Within about 27 days on the market is the average in our marketplace right now. And if you overprice it and it sits there for a while, um, people begin to think there must be something wrong with the house. And the last thing you want to do is have to, um, what I call, um, chase the market down. So if you're too high and other houses start selling and you have to start chasing the market down, uh, you put yourself in a in a not a great negotiating position, and uh, and the longer it's on the on the market, um, the less you can expect uh, to get for that house. Uh, the third thing, when you're talking and choosing the right uh, real estate company, is you want to have a listing agent. You want to have, have a real estate company that's going to help you determine a marketing plan that will help your listing stand out from the competitive properties. I will tell you this right now. Not only when it was virtual, but even before. Uh, we came into COVID-19. Um, the first impression is not when somebody walks to your house. The first impression is online. You see to the left in 2017, 51% of home buyers found their home when, uh, that they purchased on the internet. That number is higher now. You might think that it would have been more than that, but it's a misnomer because 90% of people are starting their searches on the internet. They not, may not find your home on the internet. The realtor that they work with may find it but 90% of people are starting their search there. And so the first impression is the way your house looks with photographs and with video and virtual. So uh, make sure that when you choose an agent, they're gonna be doing the things that, they, that you need done in regards to photography so they can be marketed through the MLS, through the other listing web, websites like Zillow and realtor.com and the real estate company websites and uh, all those kind of places. And then uh, you wanna make sure that the agents are gonna tap into their own networks uh, and, and that they have a social media presence and that they have a plan for doing that. Uh, the next thing you wanna do, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because Jim Barak, who's gonna follow me from JBI as Home Inspector will talk about uh, preparing your home for sale, but you do wanna prepare your home yourself. You, you wanna start in the driveway, 
with your agent, walk through the property and look at your house as if you were buying it. Not that you've been living there and loving it, but that now your, your house is on the market and they're buying it. You'll be amazed at things you'll see that you don't see on a normal day-to-day -day basis. And one of the things I'd encourage you to do is get as many things as you can fixed up so that it just looks you know, pristine when somebody comes in. Plus the fact, the more everything is fixed, the less questions a buyer is going to have about, is this house in good condition? Is this a house that I can count on uh, not being like the movie Money Pit and, uh, and having to put a lot of uh, money into it? Um, uh, the fifth thing uh, to think about is, and this is a harder one right now with COVID-19, is showing your home. Um, we really encourage you to leave your home uh, even before the COVID-19 and the coronavirus. Uh, you want to give the the um, the buyers and their agent as much time in your house as possible. If you're there, even though you know your house the best and you can point out all the great things about it, um, if you're there, people won't stay in the house as long. Um, they'll they'll feel like they're inv invading you. They're they're uh, cutting in on your space, and they'll go as quick as they can. You want people to take their time. But I will say, in this marketplace. You want to uh, leave your home in a different way than you would have before. And one of the things you want to do is you want to open up all the cabinets. You want to open up all the doors. Um, you want to do everything you can so nobody has to touch anything. And then the buyer agent who's bringing the buyers in and stuff, they'll, they'll come in and there'll be masks and, and gloves and they'll have sanitizer and hand side and they'll, they'll wipe things down as they go. But what you want them to do is be able to just kind of go through the house and not have to touch anything. Um, and so the more that you can do that, uh, as you're leaving. I know it's a little bit more extra work, uh, but the more that you can do that, the better chance you have of keeping your home um, in, a, in, a, in a safe way and, and, and not putting yourself in a position of, of having something happen. Um, absolutely encourage the lockbox. The nice thing about the lockbox is that it sits on your front porch. If you are going to get in the shower or something like that, you just bring it inside. That way somebody can't get in the house. But the lockbox, again, gives people the convenience of, of being able to get in your home. Um, you wanna get somebody, an agent that really is gonna help you negotiate. Um, you know, we can market your house, we can get somebody interested in it, but what you really want is to, to, to be able to have, um, know the process and have an agent that's gonna explain how we're gonna get the best price and the best terms, and, um, and they're gonna nego negotiate on your, best, uh, on your behalf. Uh, Vincent, number seven. Uh, at, at this point, and, and I'm not going to say a whole lot more because uh, Bill Tucker is going to talk more about this as, as, as we get along, um, but once, once we've marked your house, we've gotten people through the house, we found somebody who's interested in the house, um, and, and a contract has been written, um, and you've accepted that, and you've accepted the terms, the next thing that's going to happen is, is this is a different term than in Virginia, but you're going to, what, what basically is you're going to start the process toward closing. Uh, in different states, they call that opening the escrow. Um, but in Virginia, we talk, we talk about settlement and closing, and Bill Tucker will talk about that. Um, he'll talk about, um, you know, getting, getting everything in place, and, I, and I'll let uh, Bill do that. But, but you do want to pay attention to all the contingencies that are included in the purchase contract, and one is a home inspection, and that's why you want, we're going to have Jim Durack talk some. Um, you know, somebody may want a radon. If you've got a basement, uh, people may be asking for that. Um, uh, right now, COVID-19. Uh, uh, addendums. You got to be very careful about that because some of them are very open-ended and, and they could cause you to be a 30, 45, 60 day delay, which you do not want to have um, just as an automatic. You may need to do that, but you want that to be a mutually agreeable uh, scenario. And your agent can walk you through all those uh, contingencies. One thing I would encourage you as I kind of finish up and we'll run through these last ones real quick, I'd encourage you to, to sit down with your agent. Once you've decided the agent, you've got the house listed, you're getting ready to put it on the market, I would have your agent give you a sample contract so that you can uh, read through it. And if you have questions about it, uh, the agent can answer those questions for you so that when you do get a contract, now it's just a matter of looking at the price, looking at the terms, seeing the conditions um, and, and, and working through those, those things versus now with the emotion of getting the contract, still having to read through the contract. So do it early on have that information already uh, understood. So you're really just kind of looking at how the blanks were filled out. You know what the paragraphs say, and now it's just a matter of getting your best price, getting the terms, getting the closing uh, time frame that you want. And then uh, eight, nine, and 10, um, scheduling the appraiser, the, the, the lender will do that. Uh, another thing I would encourage you to encourage your agent to do 
is if by any chance, any way you can, get the buyer to use a local lender. Um, a local lender knows our marketplace, knows the, you know, the nuances of our market. And, and when you use a local lender, you've got a better chance of, of having a more local appraiser, which is really important when you're trying to get the value that you want uh, for your house. And um, you want to have, when the appraiser comes, you want it to look as clean and as neat as when you had a buyer coming through, right? You also want to get your agent to provide the, the appraiser a, a package of floor plan. If you have a floor plan, get it to your agent. Um, a survey of the property. Those are really, really helpful to the appraiser. And then the comparables that your agent used uh, to determine um, the price. And then uh, in most situations, you're going to have a home inspection, uh, a home inspection and then um, the appraiser is going to uh, come in and they're going to do their job. And, um, and at that particular point, it's really now to the point of, of making sure the terms and the conditions of the property are met. And, and that's where somebody like Bill Tucker and his firm, Tucker Griffin and Barnes, or a closing company like Charlottesville Settlement Company, that's where they come in, they get the contract, they get all the information, and, and they start working with the buyer and the seller and the seller's agent and the buyer's agent, the lender, uh, they, they kind of bring everybody together. Uh, termite inspections will, will need to be done, those kinds of things. They bring all those things together so that 45 days to 60 days after you've gotten your contract, um, you're closing on the house and, uh, and, and moving on to, to whatever it is next for you. So we're grateful for you being here tonight. Um, we're, we're, uh, if you'll use the chat box, I'll, I'll be uh, checking the chat box and I'm happy to uh, be responding uh, to things like there and getting questions to the people that are going to be presenting. Uh, but without any further ado, I, I give you Jim Barak uh, from uh, JBI, JBIS. He does a lot of business with Roy Wheeler Realty Company. And um, he just wants to uh, take some time to talk about the things that you want to do and preparation for putting your house on the market. Thank you, Michael. Can everybody out there hear me? Go ahead, Jim. Okay, great. Vincent, can we have the PDF, please? All right. Well, again, thank you, Michael. And uh, I am Jim Burak. I'm the owner of uh, JBIS Home Inspection. And I'm going to talk to people tonight about the importance of a pre-listing home inspection. Um, next slide, please, Vincent. Tiny, tiny bit on me. I'm licensed by the state of Virginia at DPOR and by the National Radon Safety Board. Next slide, please. And I'm an, an active member in uh, local real, real estate groups and uh, a governing board at uh, Richmond called the Virginia Association of Real Estate Inspectors. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here's a picture of me. And uh, we'll stop here just for a second. Don your PPE and boy, do we mean it, right? <laughs> just like Michael said, keep doing what you're doing out there because it's working. We are, we're flattening this thing. I think there are way fewer sick people because we're all doing the right things. My company policy is that I will be wearing a mask and gloves and, and even if need be a protective suit with hood and, and booties, you know, foot inserts and things like that. I have plenty of gloves and sprays, et cetera, for my customers and clients if they choose to be there. And I've experienced too during the COVID is that realty companies have different policies and have helped them conform with that. Uh, some companies do not want a customer there on site. Uh, we will do our summary via uh, Skype or Hangouts or FaceTime at the end. Uh, some companies are allowing people to come at the end and that's also great. I'm very flexible and uh, you know we can adjust. But again, the take home thing is we all need to be smart and careful and uh, the country will get back to work and we'll be in good shape. So, uh, so you're thinking about selling your home. Well, why should you get a pre-listing home inspection? Um, in a sentence, the best thing is that you know your home's defects before you go under contract. I think in Michael's slideshow earlier, it was item number seven, where he mentioned that you go under contract. And you know, once you're under contract and you find out you have a major defect, you have to scramble in some cases or make a decision maybe that you didn't want to do uh, or, you know, you feel like you're stuck doing it now. So, you know, my second bullet there is, you know, you have the opportunity to fix or otherwise prepare your home. 
Uh, and the last thing is you're protecting your investment. And, you know, Michael said that, you know, you may have loved your home, but now it's time to save it. Uh, sorry, sell it. And uh, it's time to, you know, also protect your investment with an inspection like this. So what I'm going to do is I will go over every major component in the inspection and only touch upon a few things just so you can get an idea of what we're doing uh, for the pre-listing inspection. In fact, a I do a pre-listing inspection the exact same way that I do um, an inspection for a potential buyer because the importance there is I'm looking at it with the same eyes. Um, and, you know, a, a, a potential seller may only go in their attic to throw their Christmas ornaments up there once a year and they don't really go in, in the full depths of the attic. Or maybe they've never been in the crawl space and, you know, this is one thing that we will do in depth. So. I'll go over a few of the uh, uh, major things on each major component during a home inspection, and it may generate some questions. And like Michael said, he's manning the chat board. And Michael, if anybody wants to stop me, please stop me and I will take the question and answer it. If not, I will roll through this um, and we'll go from there. So uh, Vincent, can you go back to the last one, please? So here's some roofing. Here's some real obvious ones like on the left. That's a metal roof with corrosion. You know, of course, that needs paint. That's something a homeowner could probably see from the ground and say, gosh, you know, we should probably have our metal roof painted before the inspection. But the one on the far right is a piece of uh, lichen growing on roofing surfaces. You know, folks don't really think about the moss and the lichen that grow on there, for example. Uh, it's actually a hazard to the roofing pebbles. You know, the roots will grow in there, uh, remove the pebbles, and your shingles will deteriorate quicker. Um, next slide, please. Uh, here's a few examples here is, uh, you know, we look at the exterior of the home. Um, you know, these are some extreme examples where we have a hole in a soffit and some really bad moisture damage at the corner of a house. But, you know, we're also looking at, you know, what do the outside of your windows look like? Um, are your exterior walls uh, plumb? That means are they still straight up and down or do we have some structure that, you know, we might have to take a second look at? Thank you. Next one, please. Uh, the garage, uh, if the home is equipped with a garage, we're of course looking there. Uh, two real common things I see is uh, garage doors don't readily auto reverse when they're supposed to. And that means, you know, let's just say a kid has parked a bike underneath the garage and someone closes the, the garage door. Well, this thing will come in contact with the bike and should reverse. And that's for human safety also. Uh, picture to the left shows a fire door in the human entry door from, I'm sorry, a pet door from the human entry door from the garage to the house. And that's a fire breach. Um, you know, they're supposed to have a smoke and fire barrier for 20 minutes uh, so you can safely get out of your house. And when you put a pet door in there, you, you negate that. So that's, you know, again, one of these things that we're looking for, and you may not even think of it, you know, you've been there 20 years and you want to put in a, a pet door for a rover, and then it comes in as a hit on your report and you have to deal with it. Next one, please, Vincent. Um, flooring, the interiors. Uh, this is an example of a structure that was beneath the flooring that nobody that owned the house could explain. And, you know, we see this here and I can measure the deflection of drop over a certain, you know, amount of feet. And that gives me an area to look at underneath the house. Um, and I can stop here. I have uh, a personal friend who sold a house in the city a few years ago on Lexington Avenue. And uh, he didn't realize that he had moisture damaged supports under his 1920 house. And it was nearly $100,000 to fix. So to drive the, the point a little further, if, you know, if he had done a pre-listing inspection, he would have known that. So either he you know, could have had that fixed or maybe changed the terms of the sale or something like that. Uh, again, you know, it's a really good heads up when you get one of these done. Uh, the last picture there on the right is the door and the frame are out of square. That typically means that there's some sort of structure issue. Um, um, or it could be as simple as a hinge, but I'll be able to determine that for you. And if we need to tighten the hinge, that's way better than a structure problem. Uh, going on to structure, and I, I will add too that these pictures are actual uh, inspections that I have performed. So, uh, the picture on the left, that's uh, attic rafters, part of the uh, truss webbing. It's bowed and it had some undue stress above it. 
And that's, uh, that's something to call out. And a structural engineer was called in and was able to remedy that situation before the house went on the market. Um, on the right hand side, we have some moisture entry into a crawl space and we know, well, uh, you may not know, um, <laughs> you know, that produces the right environment for things like mold and also insects uh, habitat. It needs to be warm and it needs to be moist. A uh, few things we look at here at plumbing, you, you might have a loose commode you never really realized. Uh, the picture in the middle, these uh, older homes uh, typically don't have anti-siphon devices on them and what they are, are check valves or backflow preventers. So, you know, if you have those installed, the water from a hose system cannot go back into the drinking water supply. This sink over here on the right just didn't deliver water. And I uh, was in a, a bathroom that wasn't used very often and uh, the folks didn't realize it was not delivering any water. So again, something that you could solve before you sell. Um, hey, Jim, before you move on to the importance of a pre-listing inspection, uh, we, we got a question about um, termite inspectors um, who don't really do their jobs. They kind of wander around and, and you know, really not get into the places that, that might be. He, he talked about um, failing to crawl the perimeter and doing a proper poke test of the sill plate, joists, et cetera. Um, how do you go about, I mean, obviously you can't regulate uh, the termite inspections, but how do you go about with a home inspection, making sure that, that those things are looked at so that you're not uh, relying on that person? Yeah, that is a great question. So uh, the first thing is, you know, just a general overview of say it's a crawl space. Uh, if you, if the crawl space is wet, you have the conditions that are right for that. The termites need, you know, water to live and a, and a source to make their mud tubes. And, uh, and that is what I look for first are, are the vertical tubes. Um, you know, that tells me that there are active habitats in the home. Uh, and that's the first thing to look for. The second thing is exactly what our, uh, our commenter or our question asker mentioned is, you know, I'm looking specifically at, at the perimeter of the sill plates to see, you know, just what's going on there. If I see any actual damage from the insect or if I see their habitat, you know, I'll call it out and, and call for the home inspection. And, you know, it's kind of good that this question came up because last summer I looked into a crawl space just to see if it was safe to go into. And I noticed that the water heater was kind of falling over on its side. And I just thought, huh, that's strange. Um, and uh, when I did the rest of the inspection and was ready to go in the crawl space, I noticed that termites had eaten the wooden platform that the uh, water heater used to sit on. And here's an, here, this seller did not have a pre-listing inspection, and I gather they had not been in the crawl space for 20 years. So the termites had chewed the platform and the uh, water heater was holding on by its pipes. So, um, you know, it, not to be too long-winded with this, you know, I, I'm not a termite expert, but home inspectors know what to look for there. They know what the habitats look like. They know what the bug looks like. They know what the damage looks like. And uh, so, and, and we know to look, you know, in the specific areas, dark, wet, and, uh, and undercover, and that's what they need to live. Go ahead. Sorry okay. to interrupt. No, no, that, that's great. It was a great question. Um, let's look at uh, the electrical systems here. You know, so, we will look at, you know, do you have power coming from the street to the house? Is the connection secure to the house? Um, we're looking at every receptacle, every light fixture, and the electrical panels themselves. And a few examples here. I hate to pick on Federal Pacific Electric Company, but I think they've uh, since failed after the class action lawsuit. But this is one particular panel we look for. Uh, it was a fire hazard. And uh, this was in a recent inspection, actually. And, uh, and I was surprised to still see one in service. Um, so of course that got called out uh, to be replaced right away um, because of the manufacturing defects that, you know, just that's how they came out of the factory. Uh, the, in the middle, uh, that photo in the middle, there's a, a very old fusing system in the house. Um, I don't, I think there may be one or two places that you can buy these fuses in the city of Charlottesville anymore. Um, whenever we see these, we say, you know, it, it seems to be functional, but for safety and fire, upgrade all of these to modern standard equipment. Um, picture on the right, 
that is a receptacle in the bathroom. And, uh, you know, I'm looking for every receptacle within six feet of an open water source, exterior of a home or garage, um, et cetera, for GFCI protection. And that is the type that will reset if it gets wet, basically. And they're supposed to reset within 0.42 of a second to take power away from the circuit so you don't get electrocuted. Um, next slide, please. Of course, we're looking at, you know, major mechanical like your heat, um, your heat pump, uh, furnaces, you know, we'll look inside to make sure that all the parts are still uh, good, <laughs> not corroded, um, you know, that we don't have any leaking that we can tell. And, uh, you know, most home inspectors uh, will test your heating by measuring input and output. So supply versus return temperatures. And that's just an example on the right hand side about, you know, what that is. Um, we have, uh, we're looking at attic and vent, uh, I'm sorry, insulation and ventilation, um, insulation under your floor, presence absence reporting. If you don't have any insulation under your floor, we'll let you know. Um, here's a pretty neat example. The left picture in the center picture is from an inspection. I saw the thermostatically controlled attic fan on the floor of the attic and somebody's desk fan was plugged in up as its replacement. So, you know, that's not really proper equipment. <laughs> so, uh, recommend a new one. And then, you know, the last thing here is, um, you know, uh, we're looking at your major installed uh, kitchen appliances, refrigerator disposals. You know, if you have a, a built-in microwave, we'll look at all that. Uh, and let's go on here to radon. Now, radon is an optional test. Um, not required by the regular home inspection, uh, uh, but several of us here in town, we are qualified to do this with the National Radon Safety Board. And radon is a tasteless and odorless radioactive gas. Um, and it can be trapped inside of your home. My home has radon gas in it itself, but it is under the EPA's limit. Um, and, you know, a few notes on this too. Um, there are some more likely scenarios where you'll have trapped radon in your house and you'll have some less likely scenarios where you would have radon trapped in your house. You know, for example, if you have a finished basement, that's a pretty likely scenario because it's below ground, it's sealed up pretty well, um, and it's living space. Um, you know, the opposite end of that is say you've got a, a home on a vented crawl space. That's a least likely scenario, but it truly depends on the geology under your house. It's karst topography, which is spelled with a K. And, uh, you know, your house could have a low uh, measure of radon. Your neighbor next door could have a higher measure of radon. There, there are a lot of things that go uh, into why you have higher or lower concentrations. Um, but I always think it's a good idea to get this done because according to the EPA's data, it's the second leading lung cancer killer in the United States outside of cigarettes. So, um, you know, again, here for your pre-listing, it's a good idea to know if you have it. And then if you do, you've, you've got time to respond. And that's what I have. I think I stayed within the 15 minutes, Michael. Um, if anybody out there has questions, oh yeah, I always throw that last one in there. Um, I was a, a, a Navy submarines for a few years and I'm proud of that. Um, and uh, that's all. If there are any questions from the, from the phone or the field, uh, I'm here to take them. No, that's great. And I've, I've, put, um, I've put Jim's uh, website in the, in the chat. So if you have uh, other questions or if you need his services, uh, just go there. You can contact him through through the website. And Jim, I really appreciate it. We've, uh, like you. I said, we've we've used Jim uh, quite often, and the and the and the, the agents and the and the clients have been very very pleased. One of the things I like, one of the things that you want from a home inspector is somebody who really knows what they're doing, who's going to be really thorough with the inspection. Whether you're the seller prior to putting it on the market, or whether you're a buyer looking to make sure that the house you want to buy is the right house. Um, you want you want somebody very thorough, but you also want somebody um, that's going to you know um, give give it give it to you straight, but not like like be you know create major problems because existing homes are existing homes. They're not brand new. Um, you're not going to have every little thing that is is perfect, uh, and so you really want to know what it is that I'm looking for and making sure that um, uh, 
the things that are that are really really important uh, get covered, and, and Jim does a great job with that. Um, another partner that we have at Roy Wheeler Realty Company is Pearl Certification. Uh, Joseph Gentile um, is is has become like a family member uh, to our company. Um, he's been great in providing the information to our agents so that we can um, uh, provide that information to our clients. And Pearl Certification is a company that. Um, is certifies grades homes in regards to energy efficiency and quality of, um, you know, quality of life and, and quality of the air you breathe. And of course that's really important right now uh, that, that you have good air filtration uh, in your home uh, as best as you can uh, to keep, keep yourself from being put in a situation where um, uh, viruses and things like that could, could cause you harm. So Joseph, we're, we're glad that you're here and, and I'm really excited about hearing about, how you guys have adapted to the market uh, because you can't really go into the houses a lot, but, but you now have virtual certifications and, and folks who are listening who, even if you're not thinking about selling your homes, folks, uh, this is a great thing to do is to have uh, this uh, happen in your home because you can one, find out um, things that you can do better uh, to be more energy efficient. And then when you do want to sell your home, uh, you're going to increase the value of your home by, by doing some of the things that, that, that Joseph's going to recommend. So, uh, welcome from the great state of New Jersey, my friend, and we're glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. All right, I'm going to uh, share my screen here. Um, let's see here. Cool. So, you know, what I want to talk to you today, today about is, is virtual engagement, right? So we're dealing in this brand new landscape in, in real estate, uh, but I guess to really set the stage a little bit, let, let's talk a little bit about what's going on nationally. Uh, Pro certification is a nationally recognized certification. So when we when we look at things, although we originated in Charlottesville, you know I look at data from across the country, and you know look, transactions and listings are down. And I'm not saying anything that's a, that's a shock to anybody, right? But if we look at it uh, nationally, I think they're saying it's about 40% down. Uh, it's about 20% on the listing side, which is very interesting. So it's really showing that you know inventory is is again at a shortage. So it was a shortage before. Um, but it's, it's a little bit further down now. Um, and there's also a hesitancy foot traffic in homes, right? So we're talking a lot about virtual today. And, and look, that's because nobody wants anybody in their house right now. And if they can avoid it, please do. Um, but what we have also seen is that a new buyer has emerged, uh, which is really interesting. So as we've seen some, of, some generations of, um, of people come out of the home buying process, the millennial buyer has actually left the rental market and has entered into the home buying market, which is really interesting from a national perspective. Uh, so it's really opened this up. So when we talk about energy efficiency, that's the buyer who we're really trying to appeal to. And, and it's really interesting to watch them enter into it. Um, so I like to talk a lot about displaying versus marketing a home. And I'm not going to get too into the weeds of this, but as we enter into a virtual market, what we really want to do is get more into marketing of a home rather than displaying it. Um, in, a, in a market where inventory is at a shortage, you know what, you put a house in the market and it's going to sell in a few days. And like Michael was talking about earlier, what you don't want to do is get into a situation where you're chasing the market because what you want to do is really showcase your home. You want to make sure that your home has every highlight um, brought to the attention of every buyer that's out there so when buyers are out there looking, they, it has the most eyeballs on it, the most attention to it, and you're really shining it up so, so it presents itself the best. So when you display a home, what do you do? You leave a lot of the, like, questions out there. What's behind that wall? What's in that house? What else is there? And if you can't answer these questions on the listing, what are you doing? You're letting that buyer maybe go to the next house that's next door to you that's for sale and that may be marketed better that has answers to all those questions that those buyers are asking, right? So what we wanna do is take away all those questions and get into marketing a home where we have people that are sitting there enjoying the process and you're creating an experience for them as they're going through that home online. So they're really figuring out, hey, what is it gonna be like, like for me to raise my family here? So when we, when we transition from displaying the marketing home, what are we doing? We're building a customer experience, right? Uh, the role of the agent has changed, right? That agent is no longer just a real estate agent. They're a storyteller about living in the house, right? Um, there's a greater importance of, of the agent because they're walking per somebody through the home and they're maybe staging the house a little bit better, right? They're becoming that storyteller that, hey, living in this house, 
is you know going to be more comfortable. It's going to cost less money. The air is going to be better, right? So marketing mastery. So what, what do we do? Maybe you take photo you know, photography from a different lens. Maybe you're setting up your staging a little bit different where maybe you're setting up a, a chessboard outside on a patio with two chairs and somebody sitting there looking at it online saying, hey, this looks like a great place for me to sit and play games with my wife while I'm watching my children run around the backyard. You're really enhancing what you're doing and becoming more effective at it, right? Um, maybe a more detailed property description. Talk a little bit about what it's going to be like in that house with better air, less cost to uh, manage the house every month, and better use of the MLS data fields, right? The MLS has a ton of data fields, and what you want to make sure is that your agent is sitting there checking off all the data fields that have to do with your listing. And, and that's really where Pearl comes in, right? So Pearl is an easy button where we take all the energy efficient features in a home, bring them to the forefront of the transaction to make your house more valuable. Right. So how does Pearl do this? Right. So Pearl does this through what we call babies, bills and comfort. Right. We focus on things that are going to improve the indoor air quality of your house. What drives down the cost of the house? Well, because your house is more efficient, it's going to cost less money to run every month. It's also going to be more comfortable because if you went up to a group of buyers before they started their home buying process and said, hey, who here would like to live in a house that had better air quality, cost less money to, <laughs> to run every month and was more comfortable? A hundred out of a hundred people would say yes to that. So that's what Pearl does. So what Pearl does is we offer two different types of certifications. And what's key about our certifications are that when a house is marketed correctly with Pearl, they sell for more. As a matter of fact, the independent appraisal study that we did in Charlottesville, Virginia, showed that homes marketed correctly with Pearl sold for 5% more at closing. So what we've done is, look, like Michael said, we've had to go virtual. So we've been able to create a process where we can work with you, the homeowner, and your real estate agent to virtually certify the house through things like, you know, photos, uh, FaceTime walkthroughs, and things of that nature, and, and documentation on your home. And we can certify all the assets in your house to give you a full marketing packet to really enhance the selling process for you so you can get maximum value for your property. So what does the enhanced marketing look like? Well, we give you the, the certifications, obviously. We give you a full inventory report, which we call a certification report of all the marketing, um, of all the high-performing features in the house. We give home tour cards. We give home seller flyers. We also give what's really important to you is the appraisal addendum. So with this appraisal addendum, you can actually work with your local appraiser so you can sell your house for maximum value and have it appraised for that value as well. So there are a bunch of trainers that were trained down in Charlottesville, Virginia, and it gives your agent the ability to request, request one of those, um, those appraisers so you can actually have it properly documented and appraised for more. It's a fantastic program. Uh, the, the agents at Roy Wheeler have been on us since the very beginning, and we appreciate Michael and all the support that we get from them. But you know, look, what we try and do is enhance the home selling process for you so you could make the most money in your transaction. So now if you want to see how, the, how, how our certification works, you can pre-qualify your home with our app, or you can just email realestate at pearlcertification.com and we can help you walk through that process. And I, I, think, I'm, I think I did it and am I, did I break a record here? Because I, I know I'm from New York and I talk really fast, Michael. You did great, man, you did great. Really good information and um, we'll uh, uh, obviously get this information into the chat box, and, but it's pr pretty easy, folks. If you, if you go to pearlcertification.com, uh, you're going to find uh, all that information. And if you forget pearlcertification.com, just Google Pearl Certification. And, and quite honestly, they're becoming more and more nationally known. So I'm guessing you could even, um, you know, Google energy efficiency companies and they're, they're coming up that search engine optimization uh, pretty significantly, but they're, they're very customer service focused and they, uh, uh, it really does bring value to your home. There's no doubt about it. it uh, one thing I didn't talk about when we we're talking about, uh, preparing your home for sales. Another thing I really encourage uh, folks to do is to um, provide a home warranty on the property. So you do the pre-listing inspection, you know everything is as, as, as best as it can be. Uh, you get somebody like, uh, you get Pearl certification in and you, you find out whether your home can get a rating so that you can market yourself as an energy efficient home. And then there are several um, home warranty companies that you can um, contract with. And the nice thing about them is they, they run about $575, $600. Uh, 
But the amazing thing is from your all standpoint as a seller, it's free until the property closes. So what happens is you are able to market the property with a home warranty on it. Hey, I've had a pre-listing inspection, have at it, do your home inspection. But even if, um, you know, somewhere along the way, way during the walkthrough or whatever, there's something still missing. I have a home warranty that when you buy the house, it's going to convey to you and you're going to have that for a year. And all you'll have is a deductible to pay if anything breaks and if they can't fix it, it gets replaced. And so from a seller standpoint, to me, it's a no brainer. It's a wonderful differentiator in regards to this house has it, whereas another house doesn't. You're protected. If something goes wrong while your house is on the market, your dishwasher breaks. Instead of having to, oh man, I got to buy a dishwasher because my house is on the market. You, you, you get it repaired with a deductible. They can't fix it. You replace their dishwasher. You get a brand new dishwasher and your house is now more marketable because it's got a new appliance in it. Um, and so, uh, and if your house for whatever reason never sells, you never pay anything. So um, there are a number of different uh, home warranties. We can help with that. Um, email us at homes at RoyWheeler.com. Call us at 434-951-5124. We can get, make sure we get you the information in regards to home inspections, pearl certification, um, uh, the information that you need, gets you in touch with the different people. And again, we, we see ourselves as the source for the source. And what I mean by that is you ask us a question and we, we may not have the answer, but we know somebody that does. And so no matter what it is, as it relates to real estate, home buying, home selling, second homes, um, general contracting, handyman, renovations, we know people that can help you do that. And, uh, and we're happy to serve that role in whatever way we can. Um, uh, last but certainly not least, uh, my good friend, Bill Tucker. Uh, Bill and I have been uh, partners in a, in a joint venture called Ednam Title, uh, almost from when I got to Charlottesville. It was one of the first things I did when... I came to Roy Wheeler is I wanted to have a partnership with uh, um, uh, attorneys uh, in the area. And so we created Ednam Title. We got several attorneys that are involved in that. We also have Charlottesville Settlement, which is a uh, closing company versus a real estate uh, attorney that can handle uh, the transaction. And, uh, and Bill is, um, and he's just always there for me, uh, whether it's getting advice or coming on my radio show or doing these crazy virtual uh, uh, seminars. We've, We've gotten Bill out of his comfort zone. He's having to learn how to Zoom and do those things too. But, uh, you know, we've talked about all these different things and now we've got the contract bill and uh, he walked the, the sellers through what they should be thinking about um, from, from, you know, accepting that contract to, to actually get, uh, go into closing and get the money um, from their equity. Thank you, Michael. <clears throat> you know, I'm really not Bill Tucker. I'm Ellie Tucker, so I still don't really know how to Zoom. My wife knows how to do it. Although this is my fourth Zoom today, so you'd think I'd learn by now. Uh, hi, my name's Bill Tucker. I'm a real estate attorney. Uh, I like being a real estate attorney because I can, I don't have to wear ties. I can wear shorts to work. I sometimes, basically the most I'll wear is a polo. Uh, the, before the show, they saw me getting out of my t-shirt into a polo, so I dressed up for you guys. Um, but I like Too much it. information there, Bill. Too much information. <laughs> I like being a real estate attorney because I can be relaxed. And you want, you know, you, 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 you need an, a good real estate attorney just like you need a good realtor, just like you need a good pre-listing inspection, the PERL certification. I didn't know a whole lot about it till this seminar, but I, I'm impressed. I like Michael's idea about the, uh, uh, the, the buying the warranty. I, I, see, I do see that in a lot of contracts, and that certainly is helpful. Uh, what I was supposed to talk about is what a seller needs to know about selling property in COVID. Um, you know, just talking about some of the issues we deal with. And I have a, a, a thing that Vincent will put up in a second. But basically, when we put up the, the well, we call it Tucker's Tips for Sellers. There you go. Uh, when I go through that, there, a lot of the things are the same with COVID and, and, and pre or post COVID. It's, it's going to be the same, except with COVID, it's changed the way we do things a little bit. For example, the one thing we preached in the whole process is please, as a seller, be patient. Your, your property will get under contract. It'll probably take longer to get it closed 
the normal because everything is just taking more time. So, so the, the key thing is to remember to be patient, ask questions, uh, you know, know what's going on, but expect delays. It's just the nature of the beast, unfortunately, with, with what we're all going through. Uh, another change to tell everybody about is in, in the past, we would have you come to our office, sit down with one of the paralegals or myself, uh, and sign your sale documents. Now, this is all at the end of the process, so I'm now just sort of jumping ahead to the end, uh, but I'll go back to when you should get an attorney involved in just a second. But at the closing, it's now going to be different. We are probably not going to sit down with you. We're going to social distance as much as we can. I don't see that changing a whole lot, even as we get uh, uh, more things open up. Uh, a lot of times we'll suggest that you sign a power of attorney to let us sign the loan doc the sale documents for you. Uh, we sometimes will do drive-by where people will drive up to our office and they'll sign a power of attorney in their car. Again, social distancing as best we can. Uh, in, our, in one of my offices, we have a, a glass atrium, and what we've done is we've set up on one side of the atrium a table with chairs, and on the other side of the glass is where the paralegal sits, so there's a big glass wall separating the clients from the... Uh, uh, from the client, from the paralegal, and they communicate by cell phone and sign documents that way. Uh, we don't, you know, Michael doesn't like to hear this, but he understands it. We don't want the realtor to come to the closing. We want fewer people to come. So typically, it's just the the sellers coming to sign their documents. So expect things will be a little different. You won't sit across the table from us. Uh, we will be able to with with telephones and uh, emails be able to communicate really well. The third thing that's different is the actual way we go about and we record the deed. Uh, when, when you sell your property, you're going to sign a deed. That deed is like transferring a car. It's like the car title. That deed gets turned over to the buyer's attorney at some point in the process, usually it's right at the day of closing. But that deed, unfortunately, because all the clerk's offices are closed, will not be recorded immediately. Uh, in Northern Virginia, for example, they've always had like, I think it's a 72 hour rule. You'll close on Monday. It doesn't have to be completed till Thursday, 72 hours later. In Central Virginia, we've always tried, if we're going to close on Monday, we want to do everything and get it completed by Monday, Tuesday at the latest. Uh, that's been our practice in the past. Unfortunately, now uh, with the clerk's offices closed and, and just the delivery of documents taking more, we have found that um, we need to tell you that you're not going to probably get paid your proceeds from the sale if we if we close on Monday. You, we'll be lucky if we can get you your money by Wednesday. And the reason for that is some of the clerk's offices are closed. Actually, most of them are closed now. Some of them allow something called e-recordings, which is a way to record the document uh, through, the, uh, through email. Uh, some don't require that. Some, you actually have to drop the documents in a drop box outside the clerk's office. They'll come out and pick them up throughout the day, and then they'll record but you've got to make sure everything was, uh, was done correctly. So the recording may happen on Tuesday, but we won't be able to make sure everything will happen correctly until Wednesday. So anyway, don't expect your money right away. And as a result, work with your realtor about when you're going to give the keys to the buyer. Because if you closed on Monday... The buyer, quite frankly, is expecting his keys. He signed all the documents he needs to sign. He's uh, gotten given his money to his settlement attorney. He's gotten his money from his bank. So this, the buyer's kind of finished. He thinks he's, he's done. He wants to move in. But by, it won't be his house officially until Wednesday, until everything gets recorded and things can be dispersed. So work with your realtor about when you're going to hand over keys. Uh, so those are kind of 
the differences when we're going to go through Tucker's tips uh, about things just to remember as a seller. And this, this is not an exhaustive list, but this is just something I've developed over time that I think helps, helps out a, a seller to understand some of the pitfalls, some of the things to think about and make sure that don't, they don't get forgotten. For example, first one, Michael will love this one, pick a good real estate agent. <laughs> You really need to pick someone who knows the market. I, I hate it when a realtor from Northern Virginia comes down and, and wants to try to show, show people and sell property in, in Charlottesville. You need to pick local realtors. They know the market. They know the, what needs to go on to make the closing successful. Um, this is... Um, Next one, number two, provide a copy of your title insurance policy and physical survey to the listing realtor. This is just something that when you bought the property, you, you probably got title insurance. You also might have had a fiscal survey performed on your property. If you've got those, give them to your listing realtor. They will help make the closing go smoother. Um, another, another real important tip is use your correct names. Now, it may not be your legal name, but whatever name is on the deed when you bought the property, that's the name that it would be easier for you to use all the way through the process. So let me use me as an example. My real name is William Daniel Tucker III. I don't think I've ever bought any property that way. I've, I've bought property as W.D. Tucker, or William D. Tucker, or Bill Tucker. So whatever name is on the deed, that's the name you want to tell your realtor to use throughout the process. It'll just, again, make things go smoothly. You won't have to sign affidavits saying your name's a different name. Uh, provide the correct property address. The legal description, a lot of times your realtor will go and get a copy of your deed, and that'll give them the legal description. Tax map and parcel number are important. If you happen to own two parcels side by side and it doesn't look like two parcels, you just have a house built on these two parcels, make sure that the realtor and everybody understands that it's two parcels that you're selling. I, I promise you twice, three times a year, we will end up doing a closing that all of a sudden we may get to closing and find out, whoops, I left a I left out this small little strip of land that I meant to include in the deed. Uh, and that just makes a mess to fix it after closing. So make sure you're listing with the realtor all the property you intend to sell, even if it's a small little strip that's, that's adjacent. You uh, want to sometimes get an idea what your closing costs are going to be uh, so you know approximately what you're going to net out of the property, especially if you're buying another property. You want to uh, make sure you're going to have enough from the, from the sale. Uh, whenever you call, this is a little tip, whenever you call your mortgage company and get a payoff or they, they tell you over the internet how much you owe, that does not include your, pre, your interest that's accrued. In other words, when you pay your payment on, let's say your next payment's June 1st, when you pay your June 1st payment, you're paying interest for May. Uh, so on, if you sold your property on June 15th and you called your mortgage company and you found out you owed $182,000, by June 15th you owe $182,800 because interest is accrued. So when you go online, you're typically only going to get the principal amount. Um, make sure that all of the signed contract addendums and that they're, that they're legible are provided to all the parties with the transaction. Uh, a lot of times we'll, we as an attorney will get uh, the contract but we may not get some addendum that got signed uh, going through, for example, the HERCA. That's where you have, a, you have an inspection and there's some items that have to be repaired or credited. And there's a HERCA agreement and that's just a document that, that we all need. Um, your, if you're selling and you happen to be in a, uh, uh, not on, if you're not on public water, public sewer, 
you're going to need to have a well septic and termite test inspection done. It's required in, in most of our contracts. Most of the buyers, uh, lenders require these. So uh, work with your realtor to make sure that these items get done within 30 days of closing. If it's if you have it done too soon and the 30 days expire, you may have to have another test done. This, this is a real important one. Uh, the, let me back up for a second. You, you should get your attorney engaged and in, included in the process probably after you've signed the contract and it's been fully ratified. We, most of us real estate lawyers, don't mind during even that process if the realtor or you have questions about terms in the contract we'll get involved and we'll help you make sure they're drafted so there's no problem later on. Uh, so it's, a lot of times you're going to engage the attorney or the settlement company uh, early in the process, although we're not going to do a lot of our work till the end. Um, hey Bill, one quick thing, good time to bring this up and even if it isn't, I'm in charge so I'm going to bring it up. Um, <laughs> talk about, just like we talked about with the pre-listing and home inspection, talk about if they choose the attorney, the seller chooses the attorney early on or the closing company that, that there can be a pre um, pre listing title search, which can really help on the back end as well. Correct. What Michael's talking about is you may have had your property given to you uh, from a family member. You may have inherited it or you, you may just have owned it for, you know, 10 years. Uh, it's good to have a pre sale title search done. It's not very expensive. Some people will do it without any cost. Typically it'll be about $50. Uh, and that's where someone goes in, a professional title searcher goes into the office where your property is recorded, clerk's office, and checks the title from the time you've owned the property forward. It's real helpful because a lot of people, here's what happens a lot that no one knows about, but it, I mean, until, you, until it happens to you. You've bought your property, you had a loan, uh, three years later interest rates fell, you then refinance. Uh, you find you've got your new loan, you've been paying on it for seven or eight years, now you get ready to sell the property and you discover when the title search is done for the buyer that that first loan you got that was paid off seven years ago is still not released a record. Uh, even though you paid it off, the bank forgot to or didn't do the right procedures and release the, the document in the clerk's office. And that bank's gone out of business or they've merged with another bank. So having this pre-sale, uh, pre-listing title search done allows us to find that old unreleased deed of trust and deal with it well in advance of the closing. Um, this is really important if you're in a homeowner's association or condo, you have to deliver to the buyer a packet. It's called a homeowner's packet. Uh, give the, make sure that gets done right at the beginning. Don't wait. I tell people not to wait until you do the inspection or the buyer qualifies for their loan because you, the, the buyer has three days after they receive this packet to say, I don't like it, I'm terminating the contract. So this is a get out of jail card. If you don't get rid of this get, jail out of gear, jet, get out of jail card at the beginning of the transaction, and now you're waiting and it's two weeks before closing and you deliver the package, but the buyer has had a change of heart, you know, they've, nego they've gotten their loan, they've negotiated the HERCA, uh, repairs and now they said you know what I've got buyers remorse I don't there are too many repairs I don't think I want to take this property on and you deliver the packet then they don't have to give you a reason they just say I'm terminating because I I don't like I said Herc I meant the homeowners association packet they say I don't like the homeowners association documents I'm terminating the contract so that should be something you do early on in the process uh, I, I recommend you almost do it before the inspection. Uh, some sometimes people say let's wait till after the inspection, but then you're giving them another shot at the apple. Uh, propane. Uh, make sure you 
don't forget that you're selling your propane in that tank. Uh, it's, in, it's buried in the ground. People forget about it. And if you don't get it uh, read and the seller, the seller gives a, a, a listing of how much propane is there, you've just given away $800 worth of propane to the buyer that you could have got a check for. So, so if you have propane, make sure you let your realtor know uh, and then coordinate how you're going to get a reading right before closing. Uh, I guess we have a few more minutes. Don't cancel your homeowner's insurance until after the closing is completed. And let's, let me use the example. We're closing on Monday, but for whatever reason, it doesn't get finished till Wednesday. Don't, on the Friday before, call your insurance company and say, hey, I'm selling my house this coming Monday. I want to cancel my insurance on Monday. Wait until everything's finished on Wednesday or Thursday that following week, and then call your insurance agent and say, hey, I sold my house last Monday. Cancel my insurance last Monday. And they'll do it. So don't cancel it too early. Uh, if you've got a, a FHA loan, uh, this is a little, little problem with FHA loans. Uh, interest is calculated not daily. It's calculated by the month. So if you uh, sell your house in the May 30th and close on May 30th, but the loan doesn't get paid off till June 3rd, you not only owe all of May's interest, you owe all of June's interest. So don't sell your, uh, don't, don't close if you've got an FHA loan at the, at the end of the month. Once you enter the month, you're going to owe the whole month's interest. Close on the 20th. Don't wait till the end of the month. Um, utilities, uh, I think you have to leave utilities on now, the way that most of the contracts are worded. Uh, you've got to leave them on until uh, the final walkthrough is done. So don't turn off your utilities too soon, especially if it's winter. You've got to bring a photo ID to closing. Uh, we still require that. So make sure you bring a photo ID. Um, also, a, another important thing, if you're going to have us wire money to you, the, the, the closing proceeds, we would like you to hand us at the when we're meeting with you face to face, hand us instructions for where you want that money wired. We don't like to use the internet for giving out wiring instructions. Um, don't close on the, we already talked about FHA loans, don't close on the end of the month. I think realtors have learned three, three dates, well four dates, first, the 15th, the 30th, or the 31st. They don't know there are other numbers in between. There really are folks, so use some of those other numbers for closing. Um, the 17 is a tip. It's, you know, we talked about it before. Arrange for when you're going to give the keys out, when you're going to allow the, the buyer into the property, especially now with COVID and now that we know we're not going to be recording the same day. Uh, next one is almost the same thing. We're not going to get your proceeds that same day now with COVID. Uh, it's going to take a little while. And the last point is, there's so many moving parts to a closing with COVID. Now there are more. Be flexible. Don't blame anybody. Say, hey, we're going to have problems. Let's come up, figure out a way we can uh, fix those problems and get a successful closing. Uh, it really does work. If everybody works together, it becomes a team effort. And, it, and it'll be a successful event for you. So that's all I've got. Great, great stuff, Bill. Uh, thank you, Jim, Joseph, Bill. Um, uh, I think, you know, we've given a lot of really, really good information. I think the thing that Bill just ended with is it's a great way of, of summarizing. Uh, you want to understand the process. That's what we wanted to do tonight. We wanted to give you an overview of the process because the more you understand the process, the less misunderstandings there can be. Um, the more you know exactly what's going to happen. I mean, you've just talked about, we've talked about not at the end of the month, if it's FHA, several days, uh, even as much as the 20th, because you want to uh, pay as little interest back um, than, than you need to. Um, even, even closing on a Wednesday or Thursday versus a Friday. Uh, if you're thinking about wanting to get in that house over the weekend, uh, don't wait till Friday to close, because if something messes up and they can't get it to recording, the seller and the seller's attorney may not give you the keys. Uh, and and you know, Bill, Bill talked about that. Uh, every attorney has a different spin on that. 
Um, and so it's okay. Uh, you just need to know what attorney is going to allow you to get the keys when you close and what attorneys aren't until it, it actually recorded. And, and you can plan for it. You can know it. But one of the big things is by closing on a Wednesday or Thursday, there's a much better chance that your plans of having those movers getting there on Friday and moving that stuff in, um, you know, on, on Saturday or whatever the case may be, there's a lot better chance of that not getting messed up. But it's what I, what I call safe islanding you, okay? This is a journey. And you're 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 going through the water and 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 you're getting to that next island. You see it. I don't know about you guys. I I don't like to be in a body of water where I can't see land. Uh, that hopefully I could swim to if I had to. Um, but I'm joking in one sense. But the point being is, if I get to a place, okay, I'm here now. And then the 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 trusted advisors, the real estate agents, the lenders, uh, the home inspectors, um, energy efficient people, uh, attorneys. They tell you what's going to happen next. Well, then you go to that next place. And, and, and if you have all that information, if things get twisted around and confused, it's okay because you, you understand the process and, and can kind of flex and, and, and adapt with that. But the big thing, we wanted to give you a general overview. I hope you've gotten it. Uh, this, this recording will stay on the Roy Wheeler Facebook page. You can go back to it. You can send other people to watch it. Uh, the biggest thing is if we can help you, homes at RoyWheeler.com. Uh, 434-951-5124. We're happy to uh, hear what you're um, interested in doing and, and getting you to the right people uh, to, to make sure you get it done and get it done in the right way. Uh, thank you for being with us. We said from 7 to, to 8.15, we're going to close a bit early. That's always a good thing. I uh, hope you have a good rest of the uh, uh, Tuesday evening. And, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm cheering for Mike Iver Iverson tonight on The Voice. Uh, voice finales tonight, and Mike is a UVA grad um, and is in the final. So I'm cheering for Micah tonight, and uh, I'm cheering for you all as you think about um, uh, real estate and and either buying or selling. If we can help you, Roy Wheeler's here to help you, and we look forward to doing that. Um, for Vincent, who's run the show, myself, Jim Brack, Bill Tucker, Joseph Gentile, um, good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight. <laughs>